So the case is being heard by Chief Justice Kwesi Enini Yeboa and Justices Yawapeu, Mafusau, Nena Megacha, Professor Kote, Mariama Owusu and Gertrude Tokonu. Mr. Mohammed's legal team first asked that the court allows them to make corrections to the petition that has been filed. Uh, Mr. Chachuchikata informed the court that it was an inadvertent error that had led to uh, the team asking for a runoff to be organized between Mr. Mahama and the Electoral Commission instead of uh, Mr. Akufuadu. Uh, lawyers for the Electoral Commission led by Justin Amenuvo and the President's legal team led by Akuto Ampao opposed the request. Uh, their explanation was that there was a mistake in the request that is seeking to correct a mistake in that instead of asking to amend a writ, instead of asking to amend a petition, it rather is asking to amend a writ. And so they had pointed out that the court does not allow it. But the court went on recess and returned and the Chief Justice Kwesi Enin Yeboa indicated that the request does not go to the substance of the petition, so it has granted a request for the changes to be made. We grant the amendment in the third stage. Let the amended process be found by the close of the day before 4 o'clock p.m. today. Yes, the respondents are accredited to amend their respective answers to the petition on or before 4 o'clock p.m. tomorrow, Friday, the 15th of January 2021. The petition is thus adjourned to Tuesday, the 19th of January 2021. Uh, we caught up with uh, Mr. Ibrahim Amaliba, a member of the NDC's legal team, who has been explaining why they made that particular request. So all we need to do is to go out there and uh, file it with the Supreme Court, the registry, and that is what is, but, is to be done. So but, but this is something we have already done, and it's, what is left is for the rest to file. The point your colleagues on the other side made was that okay, you made a mistake by referring to it as, as, a, as a rate instead that of a petition. The, it had been but that is what I indicated to you that this so was is an exhibition. No, no, no. This is an exhibition of the trademark incompetence of the EC. Because what we filed was a petition and not a rate. And so for them to come up and say that we're making reference to a rate, when indeed on the face of the document was a petition, it's a clear indication of their incompetence. A member of the president's legal team, Frank Davis, however, disagrees and he says that it shows that humans make mistakes and that is the essence of the case that will be argued in this particular matter. It was, it was obvious from the outset that they had committed errors and mistakes in the petition they filed. This was said by the lead counsel himself, Chachichikata, that they were going to correct the mistakes. We were opposed to the application in form and substance. But as you heard the court say, we are all human beings and we make mistakes. So the court ruled that even though they had made mistakes, it will permit them to amend so that the first respondent they intended to contest with in their petition is reverted to second respondent the Excellency Lanada Adodanko Akufa, the President of the Republic. So that was what happened. In essence, the court is telling all of us that we make mistakes. So we should be kind to the errors committed by others. On 19th January, the court will be sitting yet again, but there are some outstanding issues that it has to deal with. Key amongst them is the matter relating to the initial objection that uh, lawyers for the Electoral Commission and Mr. Kufado's legal team have already raised. Uh, there is also the issues about the pre-trial matters, how the case itself should proceed, how many witnesses to be called to testify or rally, uh, which evidence should be made available, at what extent should those evidences to be presented to the court, and what presentation should take place. All those are outstanding issues that the court will address on January 19th. Reporting for joining us from the Supreme Court, my name is Joseph Akable. Joseph Akable reporting from the Supreme Court yesterday as the court held its first hearing. Uh, we know the panel composition, uh, the issue with the live telecast was also made clear. Indeed, the proceedings yesterday was carried live. Let's have a conversation with spokesperson for two of the sites. Kujopon Kroma, a spokesperson on Ekufuado's team. 
Nana Dudanko Ekofuadu's team, and Dr. Abdul Basit as his bamba, a spokesperson on John uh, Dramani Mahama's team. Good morning to you both, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning, Mamadi. Good morning. And good yes. morning to your listeners. Okay, great. I want to start with you, uh, Dr. Uh, Basset Bamba, uh, on the issue of the correction. But even before I come to that, uh, the issue of the live telecasts, uh, you didn't even have to move that motion because the court had already decided. I wonder how that came to you. You didn't have to request for it after all. Uh, I think that is uh, a good thing, and we need to commend uh, the Supreme Court uh, for that. As, as we all know, this is a very, very important case. It's a case in which uh, all Ghanaians should be interested in, not only in terms of the outcome, but in terms also of the details of the proceedings. Uh, and the rules of court uh, allows a court uh, to grant, a, uh, to permit a live transmission of the proceedings. So I'm very, very happy that a court on its own, even without the petitioner's lawyer having to move their motion uh, for live transmission, allowed uh, the live telecast of all proceedings. But let me add that uh, in the interest of uh, openness, uh, judicial openness and transparency. I, I will even go a step further. Not only should we have a live telecast of all proceedings, I think that all processes filed in this case, as well as a verbatim record of all that happens in court in terms of what judges say, in terms of what lawyers uh, say, uh, should actually I mean, be posted on the website of the judicial service so that we can have uh, openness uh, in these proceedings in addition to the live telecast that the court has already granted. So I think we need to commend the Supreme Court for allowing the live telecast of the proceedings. Yeah, but just the second leg of what you said, why is that necessary? We didn't do that back in 2012, 2013. Well, things have changed. I mean, uh, the, 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 the global trends now uh, is about uh, open justice. I mean, justice is administered in the name of the people. So the judges essentially are agents of Ghanaians, agents of Ghanaian citizens. And I think when our agents are exercising power in our name, it's important that we know <coughs> everything about how that power is exercised. And I think that it would be a good thing for openness, for transparency, if in addition to the live telecast, we have the verbatim record or processes uh, being posted on the website of the junior judicial service. It could be a, a dedicated website, which just could, could be just a page uh, on the judicial website uh, uh, where uh, these proceedings will be, will be posted. Mm -hmm. And let me say, this is not an unusual demand to make. In many jurisdictions, uh, you can have verbatim record of whatever happens in court on the website of, 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 of the APS course. And I think we could do so. I actually... Uh, monitored the proceedings on their page actually but I'm not sure I saw uh, that you know verbatim reports of what was happening could you I, how do you what do you make of the suggestion that Dr. Aziz Bamba is bringing on board so good morning to your um, viewers and to um, Aziz on the other side of the conversation first of all we would have been uh, disappointed and surprised if the uh, Supreme Court had done or had directed otherwise. It's the proper thing to do to allow um, live transmission and openness so that anybody who is minded to follow um, what is going to transpire in this uh, petition has an opportunity to watch live, see and hear for himself or herself uh, what is transpiring. Um, this comment about um, a verbatim transcript of the proceedings, in my view, does not necessarily take away or add anything extra. <laughs> there is nothing more transparent beyond watching for yourself live and hearing for yourself uh, live the exchanges uh, between councils and the bench, the, the submissions that are being made um, live on television and most importantly live on record on several online portals where you can go back yourself and play over and over again and check whether you heard something or you didn't hear something. So it doesn't necessarily add or take anything away. Additionally, all the processes that are being filed by either side are matters of public record. Once you file them in the court registry, they are matters of public record. And that is why you notice, for example, that uh, the original petition and the answers from uh, both respondents uh, 
uh, are already matters that are out in the public domain. You've got copies of it. I see you referring to it and referring to paragraphs and asking lawyers to explain things to you. So I think that full transparency has already been provided. We would have been disappointed if uh, the direction was otherwise. Uh, and publishing it online does not add or take anything away from it. Mm. Let me go back to the panel. Uh, yesterday, even before the court sat, we were playing with the idea of would it be a nine-member panel, seven, uh, but eventually the court settled on seven. Dr. Aziz Bamba, are the comments on the, uh, the constitution of the panel? Uh, well, to be frank with you, uh, I was extremely disappointed with the composition of the panel. And it is not to take away anything from the integrity and the competence of the judges on the panel. Uh, look, uh, this is a very, very important case. It's, it's, it's a peculiar case uh, and in the Fourth Republic. I mean, the first time that we had a case like this was in the 2012 uh, petition. Now, when you have a case like this, a case with high political stakes, about who has been validly elected as the president of the Republic of Ghana. It's always important, despite whatever power the chief judge may have in empaneling a court, to make sure that you have a balanced and a fair panel. I do not consider this panel to be fair and balanced for a number of reasons. Now, first, this panel is a departure from what we had in 2012. In 2012, we had a panel of nine. And if my memory serves me right, uh, the Chief Justice did not uh, sit on the panel. Uh, 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 Chief uh, Justice uh, Sephora Kufu did not sit. She was one of the most senior judges on the panel. And then, then the, the most junior judges did not sit. Uh, Justice uh, Akamba did not sit. Justice Benin did not sit. So when, we, uh, from, when you look at the panel of 2012, uh, the Chief Justice did not sit. Uh, the only senior most judges who did not sit in addition to the chief justice were essentially justice uh, Sophia, Sophia Kufu. But otherwise, it was the most senior justices who were, who were in panel. Now, this panel, you have a panel of seven instead of nine, and no reason has been given why this time around we have a panel of seven. Now, there is something that lawyers say. It's actually a legal matter. You often say that you know, your law is actually in a very wretched state when a lot depends on the discretion of the decision maker because you don't want things to be based on somebody's discretion. You want some, some guidance, some rules as to how things uh, should be done. And when you look at uh, global trends, often in matters like this, you have the most senior judges uh, of the court uh, sitting on the matter. Uh, you know, it happened during the Brexit and what have you. So I would have preferred that instead of having uh, six of uh, the judges being MPP appointed judges and one judge being an NDC appointed judge, I would have preferred a balance, a balance uh, uh, in the panel. Look, uh, often you hear people say that the composition of a panel doesn't matter. It's about judges have taken a judicial oath to be fair, uh, without fear and favor. But this, that is something we tell first year law students. I mean, anybody who has studied law and knows law as a <laughs> reality, no, the judge that you appear before, I mean, matters. Uh, it matters a lot. Uh, we have so many academic studies that show that the kind of the person that you meet, the personality of the judge in terms of his principles, the judicial record, and all that matters. So I was, I was a, a bit disappointed, and I hope that perhaps the panel that we saw yesterday will not be the same panel that uh, will sit uh, on this matter. Nothing prevents the Chief Justice from using one panel just for the purposes of uh, the application yesterday and a different panel for, uh, for, uh, for the hearing. Uh, a balanced and diversified panel in such a matter is extremely important. It adds on to the public acceptability of any decision. It also ensures that whatever strong views that anybody wants to express, those views are expressed in, in the end. I mean, so the majority the, will carry the day if there's any dissent at all. Yeah, but Dr. Basit Bamba, are you saying that there's a difference if a judge is appointed by an NPP government or an NDC government? What's, has that got any implications on the final well, ruling? It has, it has a lot of implications. It has a lot of implications. If you have followed proceedings in some counties, you realize that often judges have different approaches. They have different principles. They have the way they approach the law may be different. That is why in the U.S. you have uh, some judges are appointed by Republicans, some judges are appointed by Democrats, and it becomes actually a tug of war as to who should be approved. When you look at the record of some of our judges, we have a sense of how 
they vote in some cases. Not that they are doing anything wrong, but that may be in line with their judicial principle and approaches. And what I'm saying is that in a matter like this, with high political stakes, it's important that you have a panel that has a diversity of legal approaches and all that. Some judges never disagree with others when they're on a panel, others do. And this is a case where you have a, you need a balanced and a diversified panel. And in my view, the panel that we had is not a balanced and diversified panel. I'll come back to you on the possibility of the panel being changed for the hearing itself. But Kojo, uh, is this a matter of concern to your side? Well, first of all, I think I need to um, draw your attention and your viewers' attention to something that may appear innocuous, but it is deliberate. The NDC is on a path to smear and undermine the integrity of the Supreme Court and the justices of the Supreme Court. And they are doing that because they are clear in their mind that this petition before the courts is a ruse. And I explain to you. The first evidence you notice is Muntaka Mohammed Mubarak, who goes on national television and alleges, without more, just a mere allegation that a Supreme Court judge has been involved in calling one NDC um, member of parliament elect, trying to convince Sim to vote for um, uh, Speaker Michael Quay during the election of uh, Speaker. The real object of that allegation is to begin to poison the wells ahead of this litigation. Make no mistake about it. It is a deliberate, calculated attempt to smear and to bring the Supreme Court and the justice of the Supreme Court uh, into question, even as they commence this um, hearing. And then now you have this um, uh, very bogus argument that my good friend Dr. Bamba makes, that if the Chief Justice sits on a panel or does not sit on a panel, uh, justice may or may not be uh, delivered. That when you have a panel of seven or a panel of nine, it can affect whether or not justice will be delivered. And that when you have an older or a younger bench, it can affect how justice may or may not be delivered. Um, it is one of the most bogus analysis that I have ever had when it comes to jurisprudence. And I think it is clear that it is part of a calculated effort to bring the Supreme Court and the justices of the Supreme Court into question and into a public opprobrium as they commence this exercise of hearing the petition. Prior to all of this, you heard some of the NDC apparatchiks make an argument that they themselves are not even sure they will get justice, um, you know, and that the courts uh, uh, have not been favorable to them in uh, recent times. I think that if we are serious about building a democracy and building institutions, we ought to be the last persons to undermine the democracy and the institutions of that democracy. If you are serious about going before the courts and putting a credible petition before the courts and getting that petition heard live uh, with all of your arguments and uh, evidence or the lack of it scrutinized before everybody's eyes. You don't resort to this uh, shenanigans of now bringing the court and the justices into uh, disrepute by comments like this. We all know as lawyers that um, judges have their jurisprudence over the years, yes, but judges of a court of competent jurisdiction hear a matter on the law and the facts that you put before them. In the 2012-2013 um, presidential election petition, there were judges who had been put on the bench uh, by the previous Kufu administration who, in their uh, analysis and in their ruling, disagreed with the MPP's petition and ruled against us. In recent cases, there are judges who have been put on the bench during an NDC administration who have ruled against NDC applications. The same bench, the same panel, is the same panel that yesterday dismissed um, our uh, 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 affidavits in opposition to the um, application for leave to amend the petition that was before it. So this bogus attempt to uh, uh, begin to skew the public's minds against uh, the panel is a very dangerous enterprise. And I'd like to encourage our colleagues on the other side to resist from it. Look at what is happening in America. You have a president who loses an election and goes on to tell lies to his supporters to the extent that now they attack the capital 
some of them with arms. But that's not exactly what's some happening in our country, Kojo. No, if I, if I may, if I may, even just, just a quick, a quick yeah, response. Let me land. Uh, let me land. I was quite um, um, silent. No, no, I mean, you are, you, are making, you are making some very let me land. Doc, I was, I was quite, quite silent quick to reaction. listen to you. Doc, I let's was, allow him to land. To and Kojo, do so that real quickly for me so I can get a, a, a saying, quick response. I'm saying that there are parallels between what is happening in America and what is happening in Ghana. When you lose an election, you don't poison the wells about the institutions of state and lie to your supporters that you won the election and that they should go on to the capital and do X, Y, Z. People will believe it. So it's not just talking points that you are rattling out there, thinking that you are feeling airtime, yeah, but, saying something in defense but of Kojo, what Dr. Bassett because says in the end, is a matter of fact, if isn't I, it? If I may land, in the end, you will end up getting some people believing this falsehood. And what it will do is that it will undermine the judiciary and the justice system in this country. And I think we should desist from that. Dr. Bassett, uh, Bamba, I, may, I would give you the opportunity to react, and I've got a question for you. Yes, if, if I may just, if I, just a quick response. I'm, I'm quite surprised. I'm actually shocked by the comments by Koju uh, um, Krumah. Look, the points being made are simple legal points. I mean, any, any person who knows law as a matter of belief, reality and has read all the academic studies about judges, how they rule and what have you, we know judges have different approaches to law. Everybody knows that. Uh, is that something that we don't know? This whole attempt at throwing dust into the eyes of the public that making a comment about the composition of a panel is about undermining judicial integrity I think the least said about that, uh, the better. I, I would never, never, never make any comment about an institution that I regard in such high esteem. And, and, and I, think, I think this attempt to play partisan politics in a simple, a simple matter that has to do with this um, law, I think it's, 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 not, it's, it's not the best way for my colleague uh, to present the, the issue. But no, I'm not, and I'm not here to do partisan politics. I'm here to talk about essential legal matters that are backed by facts and backed by, by evidence. The view of a spread, and I still maintain that view, that in matters like this, it is important to have a balanced and diversified panel. And I've given reasons. The reason is that in 2012, we had a panel of nine, for example. Now we have a panel of seven. We don't know why we have a panel of seven uh, instead of a panel of nine. So Dr. Bassett Bamba, you know, just... So, so if you disagree, you can disagree with the viewpoint I express. But this whole rhetoric about somebody trying to ravage an institution of state, I think it's in very bad taste, with all due respect. To my so I want to ask you, um, this uh, Justice Yawapau, who was appointed by an NDC government, specifically by John Dramani Mahama when he was president, uh, added to this panel, the only other person uh, at the Supreme Court is also Justice Puaman. So even if we want to go with the fair composition that you suggest, Dr. Uh, Bamba, where would we find the others to give it, as you described, a fair, balanced panel who are representing uh, persons appointed by both administrations, as in both parties? You know, I mean, the, the issue not is being about, I mean, persons appointed by both administrations. Some of these people just have a rule of thumb. It's a very important case. I'm just going to empanel the most senior judges of the Supreme Court, regardless of I mean, who appointed them. Here, it becomes something that everybody can understand, right? You know, but what I'm saying is not about uh, maybe impugning uh, the ability of the chief justice to, uh, to empanel a court. What I'm saying is that in matters like this, it's not just a matter of law. It's also a matter of public perception, which is also a very, very important aspect of law. And I would have preferred that uh, the balance, I mean, the panel, for example, comprise uh, of the most senior judges of, 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 of the Supreme Court. Okay. Uh, especially those who have uh, who had experience in matters uh, like that. Unless, of course, there are good reasons why that should not be done. But, but let, me, let me make this point again. I, I think that uh, when we are talking about matters of law and expressing divergent opinion, it is a very, very, very dangerous thing. I mean, for the whole thing to be presented as undermining institutions of state. Because when you do that, I mean, our supporters and those who, uh, who tend to listen to us might believe this. And I, I, and I think as, uh, you know, as lawyers, we should never, never attempt to, um, uh, uh, to do that. It's, it's not a good thing for us to do uh, for the integrity of our profession and the judiciary. Mm. 
Okay, the, this, uh, so would your team or does your team intend raising an objection on, or asking for an explanation if the same panel uh, is composed for the hearing? Um, uh, the, the team will, uh, will, will decide, uh, but you also need to know that as a matter of law, I mean, the Chief Justice uh, is entitled to uh, empanel any, any members of the court that uh, he deems fit. So as a matter of law, there's nothing unlawful about what the Chief Justice has done. Uh, but what, all we are saying is that, I mean, all I'm saying in particular is that in matters like this, when you have a very balanced and, uh, and diversified panel with different approaches to law, with different judicial records, it, it helps. It helps. And, and I still stand by that comment. Mm. There's nothing about that comment that undermines the integrity of the judiciary. Okay. Can I respond, Mama v? Yes, please do. So my good friend, Dr. Bamba, says that this is a simple legal point that he's advancing, and it's an academic exercise. But I want to remind um, your viewers that despite the claim he makes that he's not here to do partisan politics, that is exactly what he's doing under the guise of some academic um, arguments. What do you mean when you say a balanced and diversified panel? When the Chief Justice and panels to examine a matter, what is your definition of balance? Is that gender? Is that age? The chief, and that is why in his uh, submissions, for example, he concludes by saying that he knows the law. When you start introducing concepts of fairness in composition, then you are suggesting that there is unfairness or there could be unfairness in composition. The rules for impaneling at the Supreme Court are quite clear. Even three justices of the Supreme Court sometimes deal with uh, some of the procedural matters that may come um, before it. And I insist that for persons who want us to have a conversation uh, on law, we can have a conversation that focuses clearly on what is the law about, for example, um, amendments to petitions before the court. Those are pure legal academic exercises. But when you begin to raise questions about the fairness of composition, and you yourself introduce concepts about who appointed who, etc., you are beginning, Dr. Bamba, to poison the minds of the public about the bench, and it's unhealthy. And this is not the first time. One of your leaders, uh, Mohammed Muntaka Mubarak, started this exercise. Prior to that, some of your colleagues already started throwing it in the public domain that you don't expect to get justices in the courts. Yesterday, when the same bench uh, ruled in your favor that we should sit down and not advance this argument of why we oppose this petition, you were pretty happy with it. But yet, you are commencing this exercise, and I want to suggest that the judicial, like, like, like he rightly mentioned, if you read the Constitution, the judicial power um, um, uh, yeah, in this country, yes, justice emanates from the people, but it's exercised by the judiciary. When you poison the minds of the public against the judiciary like this, you are walking a very tight rope. When we went for the election petition in 2012-2013, Mama V, you can check your records. I do not recall us doing this exercise of poisoning the wells about... Uh, judges and justices of the Supreme Court. We raised legal issues. In your petition, for example, you have spent about 30 out of 35 paragraphs complaining about errors in the declaration. And then in your petition itself, there are a number of errors on the face of the petition. You come back to the court with an application for leave to amend that petition, and that application itself is written with errors. And yesterday, the Supreme Court um, I think was quite clear, even in rebutting us and asking our counsel to sit down, that the paradox in um, that which you seek is glaring for everybody to see. If you want us to have a debate on those matters and legal matters, those are the matters that we say are simple legal points. They are academic exercises, and they are non-partisan arguments that we can advance for everybody to follow. But but uh, do not do this exercise of poisoning the wells about the judges. It's not healthy, uh, Dr. Robert. Kojo, I just I want I to remind you of an exercise that uh, uh, Raymond Atugubo, I remember, uh, carried out. Uh, this was uh, an event at Gimpa where, you know, he shared a report analyzing the voting pattern of Ghana's Supreme Court judges, I think from about 1993 to 2018, by, uh, you know, taking political cases and looked at the judges who sat on them. Uh, and also linking it to when they were appointed. Uh, isn't it 
if you like, if and we can rise above this, what was the conclusion of this a, presentation? A purely, I know, I know that there were, you know, divergent views. People didn't welcome that, but I thought that we could move to a, a point where we can freely talk about these things and analyze them. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if I may just my my I mean, recollection, my recollection of that, and that's why I asked about the conclusion, was that in the end, the conclusion was not that judges vote according to who appointed them. Mamavi, is that your recollection of the conclusion? That's, that's not what I have said. I'm just reminding yes, you that's of point I'm making. a research so that was carried out that was shared. That it doesn't matter who appoints a judge. If we're all clear, even after that presentation, that there are judges who are appointed by the NDC administration who end up voting against the NDC administration on cases. They are, and I've given you an example of the 2012-2013 petition. There were judges appointed by the Kufu administration who voted against um, uh, uh, um, the MPP candidate's petition. Okay. If we I are clear that that is what the record is, why does anybody have any business now beginning to poison the wells that, oh, it's not a fair or balanced uh, uh, or diversified panel? I'm okay. saying that these dog whistles that some of our colleagues resort to are dangerous because you know the truth. You know that judges do not decide based on who appointed them on the bench. They decide based on the law and the evidence before them. You're a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. Uh, Ghanaians, many of them who are not lawyers are out there. If you keep perpetrating these falsehoods and these false narratives. That is when you get people believing you and getting on the streets and some of them getting shot and people losing their lives. Let me and give you, let me give you the last say. It's happening here in Ghana. It's happening in other parts of let the world. Let me give so you the you last the say fight, on this say, issue, Dr. Bamba. I may just, you know, I may just have the last word. I, I think, I think the, the, the deliberate distortions by my colleague in terms of the effect of what I'm saying is, 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 is to say the least. Uh, the least said about it, the better. Look, everybody knows. You, you, you are a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. We know that judges have different principles, different approaches to law. We all know that. It's, it's so basic and fundamental, I'm even wondering why you should be having arguments over this. It's so simple. Even the first year law students know this. Yeah, but nobody's all arguing saying, with the fact that judges all, have different all, all, all I'm saying is that, all I'm saying is, I'm not saying that MPP appointed judges will vote uh, MPP, NDC will vote NDC. No, that doesn't happen. The, the, our judicial record doesn't show that. The point that I'm making is that in matters like this, have a diversity of different legal approaches, you know, as defined by different styles of reasoning and all that. It's such a simple matter that I'm even surprised that we have all this rhetoric and polemics about undermining institutions, about academic exercises and what have you. I think the important point that should come out of this, this discussion is that, look, the Chief Justice has a panel of court. Uh, we hope that the panel uh, would do, and I don't have any doubt at all in my mind, that they will, they, they will, they will do a good job. But I, and then I am entitled to express that view based upon all that I know about law, based upon all the jurisprudence that I know, I would have preferred that the panel was uh, a balanced and more diversified, particularly by just empaneling the, the senior most judges of the Supreme Court. And I still maintain that view. And I don't see how maintaining that view in any way undermines the credibility or the legitimacy of the judiciary. And any attempt to present it otherwise, I think, is just, is just shameful uh, partisan politics. So why, what, great. so why don't we move on? I want to ask you, uh, Dr. Uh, Bamba. So you sought to correct an error, but did you make another error in what you sought to use to correct the error? It's quite complicated. Okay. Maybe that's what this one, this one is a pure legal matter. So that, uh, maybe the, <laughs> the partisan bickering uh, will be out of it. Yes, uh, in, terms <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, what we went to court to do uh, yesterday, yes, definitely. Uh, you realize that in the petition, uh, uh, there was a um, misreference uh, to first respondent and second respondent. Uh, in some places, instead of second respondent, the petition says uh, first respondent, giving the impression that one of the reliefs that the petitioner was seeking was a runoff between the electoral commission and then the second respondent. It's always uh, it's, it's proper and fair that such an error uh, should be corrected. And I need to make uh, this important point, why we, why we took the pains to have the error corrected. Human beings are fallible, we all make mistakes. The most important thing about making mistakes is that when you do make them, acknowledge the mistakes that you have made and take lawful processes to correct those mistakes. So all we did was to file an application in the Supreme Court 
the other parties were served, the EC was served, uh, the lawyers of our president uh, were served, the court also had its own copy. Uh, they look at the reasons that we have given uh, before the court gave a determination. And in this petition, I think that the broader thing about this petition is about when somebody makes a mistake, having the humility and courage to make the mistake through uh, lawful, lawful means. And all we are saying is that the EC now admits that it made mistakes. That the declaration of the 9th of December uh, was flawed because it contained an error. Yeah, but did you, did you now, make a mistake... Yeah yesterday again uh that one is is a it's a technical uh legal point i don't want us to get into these technical legal points the oh, point you, you know as that, ordinary persons uh, you know point, we hear it so we, that's why i uh, asked unless, the question so you can explain it to ground. us yeah yeah if i may explain the application talked about a rate amending a rate uh, and then a petition uh right now technically speaking uh a petition is different from a writ. At the same time, a writ also includes a petition. So, for example, when you go to our high court, our high court uh, rules, CI 147, a writ is included in very, very broad terms to include a, a petition. So, it was just a technological issue between the parties. And luckily for us, uh, the Supreme Court didn't want to get into any of these things. The Supreme Court was clear in its mind that no matter the label you, whether it's a writ or petition, what was being amended was a petition. And that's why it didn't give uh, uh, any serious consideration to the opposition mm. that was that, that, that were raised by the, um, uh, the Electoral Commission and lawyers for the president. Yeah, so whether or not there's a mistake, I think it's just a technological, it's an issue of a label, and, and lawyers may disagree as to whether or not it was a mistake. Okay, but Kojo, so this was quite minor, it wasn't significant. But your team opposed it. Was it just some kind of strategy? So first, let me note that uh, on a lighter note, I find it interesting that uh, Dr. Mabata says that this one is now a pure legal matter. So let's <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's just trying to maybe frame <laughs> what No, 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 I get it. It was just on the lighter <laughs> note. But listen, um, yes, it's a technical legal point, but we should discuss it. Because what my friend describes as, and if you listen to his choice of words, he initially described it as a misreference. Misreference. And then later he considered um, an error. I transcribed his words, says an error. And then proceeds to say that, yes, human beings are fallible. But the real uh, gravamen of the argument is that when you make a mistake, you take lawful processes to correct them. I transcribed his words. The essence of what is before the courts yesterday, which the courts decided on, agrees with his submissions that he has made, that human beings are fallible, and that when you make a mistake, you take lawful uh, processes to correct them. But that is not the embodiment of what Mr. Mahama and the NDC have been up to in the last one month or so. Mr. Mahama and the NDC have told the people of Ghana that one, they have all the pink sheets, Two, they have collated all the pink sheets. And three, they have won the presidential election. Let not people forget this. Mr. Mahama has held a press conference. It's been repeated by several of his acolytes and party leaders. And they have all the pink sheets. They put them together and they've won the presidential yeah, election. Yeah, but Kojo, at this point, is if, it, if I may, if I may, if I may. What matters if I may, most is it what is contained court, in those court documents? Then he comes to court. But all, all of those are parts of pieces of evidence. If we do get to a full trial stage, we'll have an opportunity to get into it. Then he comes to court and supported by his spokespersons, he says that that is not his argument. And that his argument is that the Electoral Commission has made a mistake in the declaration. And consequently, I mean, if you look at the entire petition, consequently, based on the um, uh, a mistake that the Electoral Commission made in the um, uh, declaration on the 9th, which they sought to correct by a press statement on the 10th, there are mistakes in there. And then they say, consequently, um, or as a result of those mistakes, essentially they're asking for a rerun of that election. Now, here's the point. As the Supreme Court mentioned yesterday, even in rebutting our lawyers, the judges said, look at the document before you in substance. Is it a writ or a petition? Yes, they may have made mistakes in their original petition, 
which in attempting to correct, they have misreferenced or committed an error or made another mistake before this court by describing as a writ. But in substance, what is before you is a petition. Ours was a tactical opposition to their um, uh, 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 application for leave. And what it did was that it exposed the reality that human beings are fallible and people make mistakes. And so if they have made a mistake and they want to use legal processes to correct it, they are liberty so to do. So why is it that when the Electoral Commission makes a mistake in the declaration, not even the official Form 13, not even the official Form 13, in the verbal declaration and in the press statement the next morning after, why is it that when they are legally correcting a mistake in that declaration, they should be stopped from making the argument that human beings are fallible and that they are now not allowed to take lawful processes to correct them. Those are the substantive arguments that we have before the court. And I'm sure that um, as or if we do get into a full trial, we'll get into some of those arguments. In any case, even before then, we have a preliminary legal objection. Aha. Uh -huh. I was going to that ask, has the there court. been a decision of it's that not an in terms of when that will be heard? Come again, Mama Vee. Kojo, has there been a decision in terms of when that will be heard? Uh, because oh, you no. you have a preliminary objection, the Electoral Commission also yes. does. Yes. So, I mean, the NDC came with a petition. Yesterday, what happened was that they sought leave of the court to go and amend their originating process, which was the petition. The court uh, gave them up to 4 p.m. yesterday to amend and has given us leave that by 4 p.m. today, if we want to make amendments to our response, we can. On Tuesday, when we go back to court... The court is now going to do the pretrial um, matters. And then we believe we'll most likely set a date to hear our submissions. If you look at uh, CI, I think, um, 99 and even 127, it's most likely to ask for written submissions. But um, we will be looking for an opportunity to, to make oral arguments, to go viva voce, okay. and explain our preliminary legal objection. And hopefully, I'm sure our colleagues on the other side uh, uh, we'll have an opportunity to respond to that. Okay, so Dr. Bamba, were you able to correct the errors by 4 p.m. yesterday? Uh, yes, uh, we, we, we filed an amended uh, petition uh, correcting uh, the errors. Uh, so we are hoping that by 4 p.m. today, they would have filed uh, an amended answer. Uh, if it, but let me, let me quickly react to some of the points that my, my good friend uh, has made. Uh, Look, uh, when a matter is in court, when a matter is in court, we stick to what has been filed in court, uh, the arguments, the facts presented in court. I think this attempt to refer to other matters and introduce political statements, things said by others, I, I don't think it is very, very helpful in terms of public understanding of what is in court. The NDC had, uh, the, the presidential candidate of the NDC, His Excellency President Romani Mahama, you know, he had options. Uh, he, was, he was at liberty to present this case as he having won the case. He was at liberty to present this case that based upon the declaration of the EC, there was no uh, clear cut uh, winner, so there should be a runoff. Lawyers, based upon the facts available to them, assume or take certain strategies. And if his lawyers have, have advised him that based upon all that they have seen, this is the best strategy, I mean, to adopt. I, I, I think we should be fair to the lawyers uh, and not try to make uh, uh, political statements, partisan political statements. Can I ask Dr. Pamba a direct question? Doesn't it doesn't show that he has abandoned any position? It is just that uh, sometimes, as as we lawyers uh, know, it's not everything that you may be able to prove in court, right? So you, your best bet is to take a position that you'll be able to substantiate in court using the relevant law and principles uh, and, and all. And it, 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 a quick reaction to uh, this point about the mistakes that have been made. The AC made mistakes in this uh, ninth declaration. In this term declaration, the EC made additional mistakes. In this answer, the EC has now given us completely new results. What we have now is that we have three sets of results. The, 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 the results of the 9th uh, of December 2020, the corrected results uh, of the 10th of December 2020, and then at paragraph 24 of the answer, they are giving us completely new, uh, new figures. Now, all we are saying is that human beings are fallible. If you have made mistakes, use lawful processes to correct those mistakes. 
And our position is that the EC, unlike us, have not uh, used any lawful processes to correct these mistakes. And that is why this matter is before the Supreme Court. If the EC had taken it upon itself to correct the mistakes, you know, by enacting the appropriate law, because the law that we have now, which is uh, CI 135, this is a declaration of President Instrument Act of 2020. That law is based upon the flawed declaration of the night. That law hasn't changed. That law hasn't been amended. That law hasn't been revoked. So if you are talking about human beings uh, making mistakes, I would have thought that by now the EC would have done the right thing, revoked that law which was based on the flawed results. But, but the EC hasn't done so. And that is why this matter... Dr. Bamba, a direct so question. Now, now it is for the court it is for the court to determine whether or not the EC lawfully corrected the errors or not. Okay, Kojo, let's hear your question. Yeah, so, I mean, first let me make a statement and then I'll ask Dr. Bamba a direct question. The fact remains that whether you look at what was said on the 9th or on the 10th or in the answer of the EC, when you pick the pink sheets from all the 275 constituencies or the 38,000 polling stations, Nanapu Fadu got 51% plus. Hanging on to these errors, like you argued in court yesterday, doesn't change that fact. But here's my question. I've heard Dr. Bamba say that it is not everything that you see in public that you can substantiate in court. And therefore, if your lawyers tell you that this is the best strategy in court, we should forget or forgive all that you may have said in the public domain. I want to ask him a direct question. Is he saying that it is okay for a presidential candidate to tell his supporters and the people of Ghana and the international community that he has won an election and go to court and abandon that claim and now make new claims and hang on to these new claims that there were errors in the declaration of the 9th and the 10th and paragraph 24. And therefore, those errors are as innocuous as they are and as simple as the fact that they don't change the 51% of Nana Akufuado are the ones that we should now hold on to and forget his claim, which got people on the streets, which got people dead that he had won this election. Is that the argument Dr. Bamba is making? I'm a lawyer. I make uh, legal arguments. I don't make political arguments. But uh, in no, you make political reaction, arguments as well. You've been making political quick, arguments this morning. A quick, a quick reaction to this direct, direct question. If a former president sincerely believed, based upon what he has seen, that he won, he's entitled to put that out in the public domain. In fact, he, he has that sense of accountability to his supporters, to those who voted for him, to make that claim. As to whether or not he should continue to assert that claim in court will be based upon the advice that he is given by his legal advisors. And, and I think that uh, as lawyers, sometimes we, we tend to be very, very strategic in how we approach cases. And that is why this case has been presented the way that it has been presented. I don't think it takes anything away from whatever claim that has, uh, has been made about who won or he didn't win the election. So there's nothing inconsistent about previous declarations about somebody we not not winning and then going to court and for the purposes uh, of legal argument. And for the purpose of adjudication, presenting a case that you think will be his, will be easier to understand, will be simple and direct. I don't see any inconsistency between the many case. The two is like a, a comparing apples and oranges. What is said in the political domain is completely different from what we as lawyers are supposed to do, present to the court for the purpose of adjudication. Mm. Well, so let Kojo, me conclude uh, my reaction. Yeah, but Kojo, um, and Kojo, I'm let very me ask... happy you have made these comments because now you are demonstrating to the people of Ghana not just the judges in court, but the people of Ghana, that there's no correlation between the claims that you make on political platforms and the arguments that you are now, when you are now put to strict proof, the ones that you can submit before the court. Yeah, the facts, you... Mamavi, are that Nana Dodanko Akufuado at all material times has crossed more than 50%, which is the threshold. The fact is that despite the claims of Mr. Mahama, which he made brazenly before the whole world, that he had won this election, now when he's put to strict proof. Now when he's asked to bring his pink sheets, the 38,000 pink sheets that prove that he has won, he abandons that and now is clinging to the straws of errors on the face of a declaration that was made. Okay, Kojo, that will remain... Yet when his own errors are put to him in his petition, he says human beings are fallible. They can make mistakes. Okay, that, that's your... We live to see the outcome of this matter. That's your interpretation to what has happened. To be fair, 
one of the reliefs that they are seeking is to declare that uh, Ekufuado did not win the 2020 elections and that there should be a rerun of the, of, of the election. But I want to ask and you... And they have no evidence to back that. Well, they have we, all we, the 38,000 we pink seats. They have all the 38,000 pink we, sheets. Let we, them put it on the table and we'll all do the arithmetic. Maybe that may be your strategy, Kojo. Perhaps that's not their strategy. That's why that's that, not playing That is out. the logical but strategy I, that everybody uses. You add up all the pink sheets and you tell what one plus one plus one is. We, you don't we, say we've that only, in, We've in, only in, been here in, once before in 2012. So let's see how this one plays out. But Kojo, I wanted to ask you... Uh, is, would it be necessary for your team to also make amendments? So therefore, are you uh, making amendments today? Well, we, 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 we have a meeting this morning. I'm in Parliament um, uh, currently. We have a meeting this morning uh, where the uh, lawyers haven't studied uh, the um, amended uh, petition. will make a formal decision on whether or not they file any um, amendments um, to us, and I'm sure if they decide so to do, we will let uh, the good people of Ghana know. Okay, I want to read some messages that we've received on this conversation, and then could you have a, an interesting picture that I'll show to you? You say you're in Parliament, so this is where you are is Job 600, right? Um, no, I'm just outside the chamber block. This is my office just outside the chamber block. Our colleagues are already seated in Parliament. Uh, they've been uh, <laughs> okay. for some hours now. All right, so what we are showing, live pictures from Parliament, so we see that one side has completely been taken over by the, the NPP and the other side is empty. Some members uh, have said that they went to Parliament as early as 4 a.m. But I want to read comments based on the conversation that we've just had. Uh, this one, uh, and the hashtag is AM Show. I, li I love the composure of your panel. Very decent interview. No unnecessary interjections whatsoever. Very intellectual. This other person says, to do otherwise would amount to irresponsible use of power and an open bias uh, in favor of a Kufuado who himself was beneficiary of the live telecast of trial in which he was the petitioner. It is important we appreciate that power is not knowledge, uh, but the converse is. Hashtag AM show. This one says, and who told him we're interested in this? First of all, how important is it when the eagerness and the seriousness is being messed up and taken away by the opposition errors in their petition. 2016 taught Ghanaian better than what he and uh, Mahama NDC are thinking. And I'm not sure, but I've read the comments. These are comments from Twitter. Uh, and that's the comments at least we're getting from Twitter on this conversation. Gentlemen, I thank you so much for your time. Uh, Dr. Bamba, we'll see what happens in court uh, on Tuesday, God willing, and we can have a conversation. But could you, I wanted to show you the pictures from Parliament and ask you, when are you taking your seats? Why did your members go uh, so early? What, what's the point? Parliament will start sitting from about 10 a.m. So, Mamali, your producer asked me to step out at 7.15 to join you for an interview. My office is just outside the chamber block. I am in the chamber building. Uh, my office is just outside the chamber uh, uh, block. Um, some of our colleagues were here from as early as uh, 4 a.m. Um, for some of us, it's a regular time uh, coming in here. But the point is this. Uh, we are clear in our mind that we constitute the majority in this uh, uh, eighth parliamentary caucusing. And we are clear in our mind that uh, our colleagues on the other side are uh, electing to resort to uh, unparliamentary behavior in an attempt to undermine that. And our colleagues are very clear that they will no longer countenance unparliamentary behavior. And that's why you notice that I think as early as about 4 a.m., uh, um, some were already in the chamber um, and are uh, looking forward to uh, Mr. Speaker when he takes his seat, uh, making what is clear in law and in fact well pronounced so that those who believe that they can resort to nefarious acts are guided not uh, to do so. But let's be clear, Kojo, uh, Mr. Speaker has not ruled on that. No, he hasn't. And we're expecting that this morning when he takes his seat, he will rule on that. But in the meantime, you've taken the side that uh, by convention, we see the ma majority take. Because that is a matter of fact and a matter of law that uh, we constitute the majority. And um, we're clear in our minds that this is our rightful place. I mean, if our colleagues on the other side say that it doesn't matter who sits anywhere because it's 137, 137, then they shouldn't be worried at all because then they can also sit anywhere else. Mm. I've got another question just before you go, but I don't know if you speak for the government. 
Yes, I am uh, the president's um, representative at the Ministry of Information currently, okay. uh, though my tenure as Minister for Information expired on the 6th okay, of January. Great. So if there's a question for government that I can answer, I'll do well to answer. Please, when are we getting the lists of uh, ministers? Soon. When you say soon? Soon. Is there, has there been a delay? And I use delay only because I remember in his first term, we got the list. Uh, I think just about 10th January, we had gotten almost all the names. This is not a new administration. This is uh, the second term of the Akufuado administration. It comes at a time when he has now got 16 regions. And if um, you read the constitution, uh, there is a need to also have regional balance in the constitution of cabinet and uh, the government. Um, yes, majority of ministers must come from parliament, but it also comes at a time when, and I, I, I think I have the permission of the president to tell you this, that the president will be constituting a government that is uh, smaller in size than uh, what he constituted in his first term, having completed the first term agenda. All of those dynamics together and then adding to it the processes of forming a government where he would now have to engage each of these persons and explain to them um, the specific mandates that he expects them to undertake when he puts them in a particular ministry, especially in a case where some ministries may have been put together um, or in a case where some ministries may longer, uh, no longer be in existence and therefore their work is being added to another ministry. It takes a bit more time so to do. There are also persons who will not uh, reappear in uh, President Akufuado's administration. And he has to go through a process of engaging with them, thanking them for their service and explaining to them uh, whatever new capacities that he expects them to serve in. You would therefore understand that it will not come with the same speed and time uh, that his very first administration came with. And so under the circumstances, I think we are on track on the president's program and very soon who start making those announcements. I have heard 80 appointees. Um, I've also heard no deputies with the regional ministerial positions. Can you confirm that? God bless you for what you're hearing, <laughs> uh, but I cannot confirm or deny any of those. Are you going to the foreign affairs ministry is also one of the rumors? I have heard a lot of things as well, but confirming or denying is not uh, something I'll do this morning. Kojo, I'll leave you so you can go and take your seat. Thank you so much for your time Thank this you, morning. Thank you, Mama. We wish you all the best. I wish you the same. Uh, Kojo Pankroma, of course, speaks for the government, but on our conversation uh, on the election 2020 petition, he was speaking in his capacity as one of the spokespersons for Nana Adudankwa Ekofuado's legal team. We also had Dr. Aziz Bamba, uh, who speaks. Oh, you're there. Do you want to make a comment on, on the eighth parliament? <laughs> Uh, I think this a parliament is likely to be uh, might, might be the most interesting of uh, the parliament since we've had um, uh, in the Fourth Republic, and, and, I, and I look forward to observing keenly what happens in that parliament. Uh, I wish you all the best, uh, my good friend, uh, uh, Mr. Krumer, Kojo Krumer. Thank you, Dr. Bamba. Wish you same as well. Dr. Bamba and Kojo, just a second, maybe thirty seconds. So there is a definition for majority leader and minority leader. But there's no definition for minority group, majority group. Does it make a difference? It doesn't, because first of all, when you are interpreting law, the law must be all read together as a whole, not just one textual part of it. And when you put it all together, parliament has caucuses. There's a majority caucus and a minority caucus. The majority caucus is made up of the party or parties that come together to form more than half of the number of seats uh, in the House. In this instance, it's quite clear. Yes, 137, 137, there's an independent candidate who elects to caucus with one side, and that is what will translate into who becomes the majority caucus and the minority caucus. The Speaker has already directed that this independent member of parliament, the MP for Formina, should indicate so that he can determine uh, uh, what the caucuses are. My understanding is that he's uh, replied or he's responded to Mr. Speaker's uh, directive. And following that, that should be quite clear where we stand now. Dr. Bamba? 
I, th I think it's interesting. I mean, clearly there are, there are gaps in the standing orders of parliament. Uh, uh, the standing orders of parliament uh, do not deal with a situation where you have equality uh, of uh, membership, where you have the same the same number of uh, MPs for for the, for the political parties, right? Uh, the argument that my good friend is making uh, raises further arguments as whether or not when we talk about a party, a party also includes an independent uh, candidate who is not allied to any political party. But I think these are matters. That is why we have a leader, the speaker uh, is a person with the competence and legal authority to rule on, on these matters. I'm sure the requisite legal arguments will be presented to the speaker uh, and based on the facts and the law and his own experience and knowledge, uh, he will make a determination. So let's all interestingly, wait. <laughs> let's all wait. Interestingly, to interestingly when um, uh, Speaker Badman today was, I think, majority leader at the time, and Justice Bumford Addo was in the chair, and persons like Samia and Koma, et cetera, were independent members of parliament. Um, this question of the place of the independent candidates and how it affects the size of a caucus was well addressed and there's precedent to it and we don't expect a departure from that precedent okay. yeah so, so let's leave let's leave these matters to the speaker he has authority to determine this matter i'm sure he will listen to the divergent legal arguments and then make a determination thankfully that will be in about less than two hours uh, dr bamba i am so grateful for your time kujo Ponkroma, thank you as well thank you both gentlemen okay you. good morning again to you know, listeners and viewers all right Okay, so that's it. Uh, you can see, you know, the picture from Parliament in terms of uh, how they're <coughs> composing. I don't see any member on one of the sites. Uh, so I guess that's been reserved for the NDC caucus in Parliament. Uh, hopefully we don't get any kind of misunderstanding before the Speaker makes that determination in terms of who forms majority and who forms minority. Our cameras are already there, be sure. Uh, that we will keep you updated on everything that happens in Parliament. Sitting is about 10 a.m. this morning.